We have a segment, sir, called Celebrity True or False. Okay. Where there are stories from your past that we want to know if they are true or false to make sure that the internet is accurate. If that's okay. That's with all you, we sir. want. I appreciate that. Hit, hit it. We actually have. We're some so produ- close to the internet being accurate. That this may. This is going to lock it up. It. Exactly. This will be. <laughs> this will lock it up, and we, you know, we even have some production value to it. Go yes. ahead and roll it. Go ahead. Roll it. Celebrity oh. true or false? You can't handle the truth. That's it. That's our production value. I like right it. What do you I think? Like I mean, it. as a producer, director, what do you think? That's of like the value? kind of cut and paste graphics you just download from some site. That's what we've got. <laughs> That's what we've got. All the budgets. You're looking at the whole budget. This is pretty right nice. Here. Thank you. You you've scored. We have this no nice actually. Situation. The crazy thing is, we we find stuff here every day that we have no, no idea ideas. what's here, and half of it's broken. We have no yeah. idea how it got broken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first up, uh, yes. Judd Apatow, celebrity, true or false? True or false? You dropped out of college in your second year and wound up moving into an apartment with Adam Sandler. Is that a true story? That is that is a true story. How did how did you move in with Adam Sandler? How did that work? Well, Adam at the time was living with Alan Covert. Well, he's in all of his movies. And yeah. Alan, you know, from Grandma's Boy, and uh, he produces Adam's mm-hmm. movies, and yes. it's hilarious. And they were living together, and at some point, I'm not sure Covert was covering the the rent, I think is how I got in there. <laughs> I think there was some sort of transition of uh, Alan had a different situation, and, uh-huh. and Adam uh, needed a new roommate. I paid four twenty five dollars for my room, he paid four seventy five because his room had the bathroom in the room in our little uh, terrible apartment in North Hollywood. Okay, and so that was like our early years as comedians trying to catch a break. Then he got Saturday Night Live and left me alone in the apartment with Alan Covert. No, I was alone in the apartment. But I, I realized this the other day when he left to SNL, he didn't bring his clothes. Or his ID. He just left. <laughs> he really? just disappeared. Like, you know, someone who disappeared forever. I literally have his driver's license from <laughs> 1991. He just said, screw it. I'm gone. I'm, I got the call. Something else was happening. <sighs> All right. Second one. Um, you interviewed Gary Shandling as part mm-hmm. of what you just mentioned as a mm-hmm. teenager for your radio station. Yes. And that's how you wound up getting hired to write jokes for Shandling when he hosted the 91 Grammy Awards. Is that a... Well, that is false. Okay. I interviewed him uh, when I was a kid on the phone. He was in Vegas, but he had just hosted The Tonight Show for the first time, Mm -hmm. which was a big deal. And he was hilarious on the phone. Then I didn't, you know, I I wouldn't follow up afterwards because I was a child. I was 16 years old. Yes. You you can't really follow up and go, hey, do you want to be my friend? Okay. (laughs) But later uh, in life, I was doing stand-up, and he was doing stand-up, and he was about to host the Grammys, and he needed someone to help him write jokes, and that was my first really significant job in show business. And then I went to New York, and Sinatra's on the show, Bob Dylan, Bono. It was was crazy, you know, because I had never been around Sinatra was performing at the 91 Grammy Awards? He got the Lifetime Achievement Award that year. And Bono gave it to him, and Nicholson gave an award to Bob Dylan. Holy it was a, it was a very very cool. Oh my god! Cool night. Do you remember any of the jokes that you wrote for Shandling? I I always remember one joke, uh, <laughs> which is there was a country western guy with really long sideburns. Yeah, and Gary said, "I've never seen sideburns like that before, and I'm a Trekkie." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know um, you know your documentary that 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 was on HBO about his life through his diaries is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. It was so beautiful, and um, it's on HBO Max. It, it and and everyone should see it honestly because it it, it just it 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 just reveals a human being that made so many people laugh that had you know his own demons and his way that he always seemed to have a positive outlook yeah. despite that certainly what he wrote about and i was fortunate enough to be introduced to him about a couple of years before his passing uh through a mutual friend and through that he invited me to lunch mm-hmm. and he sat down and when we sat there he'd already watched a couple of episodes of this yeah. show and gave me tips about moving the desk closer to yeah. the guest chair. I'm and still pretty far away. I know <laughs> that's the COVID <laughs> thing. I think it would have, but it, it used to be closer. It used to be much closer. Like yeah. literally he told me that you should be touching knees with your yeah. guest. Like, mm-hmm. and, and, and then the long emails he would send with just yeah. thoughts and notes, it was unbelievable. And we had just kind of met. Yeah. He was very giving so, that way. Like I would, 
like a funny story is I always would have him at the table reads. Mm -hmm. So before we would shoot a movie, we would read it out loud. We get all the actors mm -hmm. and we would invite a lot of friends and writers to tell us if the movie was working. So I had him at the table read for the 40 year old virgin. And then the debate afterwards with a bunch of people, Adam McKay was there. We were debating, does the 40 year old virgin masturbate? <laughs> right? <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be a part of this? Like, can you ignore that concept yes. of self-pleasure in a movie like this? And Gary takes a pause and he goes, what if you had a sequence where you just show him prepare to masturbate? And he puts on his favorite robe and <laughs> brushes his hair. <laughs> and, uh, and it's in the movie and it's hysterical. And he would do things like that all the time. And that's how that scene got in the film. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you have a good uh, a go-to story that you can share about the, the Larry Sanders show when you were on that? Uh, about that show? I Just mean, everything was a, was a story at the Larry Sanders show because, you know, it's a talk. It's, a, it's behind the scenes of a talk show. It's also on HBO if people want to see it. It, it's, it, 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 it truly is in the conversation of the greatest television show of all time. Period. Yeah, it's, it's End of story. very funny. And, and the bubble, in a way, is like a grandchild to it because it's making fun of the behind the scenes of people in a bubble trying to make a flying dinosaur action movie. With terrific cameos <laughs> yeah. and a great cast and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's so. connected, but it was just always intense over there because Rip Torn was one of the stars. Oh my God. And Rip Torn is a, was a genius, but very like gruff and maybe he was drinking certain days. Like it, it was <laughs> emotionally uh, challenging, but it was always worth it because he was the best ever. Hmm. And uh, one day we're shooting and I'm directing, I've never directed before. And he just turns to the cinematographer. He's like, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. You're shooting my ear. You're shooting my ear. And you gave me these the Caesar shots to everyone else, but you're shooting my ear. And it didn't really make sense because the guy was like right in front of him and he didn't like <laughs> the angle. And the guy's like, what are you talking about, Rip? He's like, I know the angles, I shoot skeet. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he really like, just like goes off about this. And then later in the day, I see him walk over to the cinematographer, Peter Smokler, who did like Spinal Tap, it's an amazing cinematographer. Yeah. And he says, you know, this morning I woke up and I was washing my car like by my house and I was walking and I, hit my head on a piece of wood hanging from my house. So I'm not mad at you, I'm just mad. <laughs> <laughs> because of that. Because of that. But, and that's the kind of, that's how it would usually roll in a very strange way. But the scene would always be remarkable and he was like a big oh my God. puppy. As Artie, I mean, it's unbelievable. I, one of my favorite lines, because I'm from Staten Island, by the way, great yeah. movie, The King of Staten Island. Thank I grew up with every single yes. person in that film. It, yeah. seemed, it was as authentic <laughs> as it gets. Um, that just, I remember when uh, Larry was complaining yeah. about the guest list yeah. and it wasn't very up to snuff. And yeah. he says, on tonight, we've got uh, Staten Island streetwise troubadours, the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is Gary didn't really know music that well. I hired my friend Juliana Roberts, like help book music acts, but Gary didn't really know almost anybody in music. Yeah. So we would book the people that we just wanted to meet. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, Let's, would the Wu-Tang Clan show up here? <laughs> yeah, you know, and so we, hey, Los Lobos is on the show. Like we would just, I remember we got Warren Zevon to do the show. Yeah, and sure. We, and we would just keep introducing people to Gary. I love it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.